challenging but rewarding. And a great decoder. Fun and exciting. Steep learning curve. Requires the most effort. Building a puzzle to get a bigger picture. A whole new world. The gold standard. In those years, we didn't have any STEM training, formal training program. Very soon, we will have a very brilliant dermatologist, dermatopathologist that is arriving. And that was the term When I returned from the United States after my training in dermatology and dermatopathology in the U.S., the state of dermatology in the Philippines was very well established. There already was a PDS, and we had the luminaries, Dr. Fernandez Sr., Dr. Gutierrez, etc. But there was no dermatopathology at all. And so what I decided was uh, to um, apply at the UP College of Medicine, Department of Pathology. And from there, I was able to teach dermatopathologists as well as lecture to the dermatologists at the UP PGH, where I would also go and do the skin biopsies and then have the laboratory at the College of Medicine do the histopathology. So this went on, and uh, in addition to that, so I taught, and then I also became a very active member of the PDS. What was important is at that time, I don't know if you know this, but we had a lot of leprosy cases. So much of leprosy cases. In fact, I miss that period of time. In the 1990s, with several other PDS, they then started to become interested in doing a fellowship. Well, how did the Dermatopathology Society? So that's the background of how Dermatopathology came to the Philippines. Started back in the 70s, 80s, 1990s, new terms came back just like you guys, and there were new words now that were coming up. Uh, 1998, I was at the World Congress in uh, Beijing and had lunch together with Amelia, Dr. Medina. And I told her, Mel, you know, there are several of us already now. There were about six. Why don't we make a dermatopathology society of the Philippines? And she said, yeah, Dr. Maganda. folded us in as Dermatopathology Interest Group. And later on, it became changed into what is now Dermatopathology Core, uh, subspecialty core group. So from 2006 until 2013, I was the chair. So during the term of Gigi Lavadi as president of the PDS in 2017-2018, I was appointed as the chair of the Dermatopathology Subspecialty Core Group. And due to the prodding of Nelfa Paliza, she encouraged me to upgrade the status of the Dermatopathology Subspecialty Core Group to that of a subspecialty society. Under the PDS Constitution and Bylaws, a subspecialty society may be established if there are at least 15 PDS members in good standing to serve as the founding officers, members, and incorporators. I took up the challenge for us to become a subspecialty society since the Dermatopathology Subspecialty Core Group was uh, already consisted of 30 PDS members. My letter to President Gigi Lavadia and the PDS officers and board directors 
2017-2018, requesting Dermatopathology Subspecialty Core Group to become a subspecialty society was granted through a PDS Board Resolution Number 007-2018 with 30 PDS diplomates and fellows serving as the founding members. The DSP officers or Execom elected were I as president, Nefa Palisa as vice president, Aileen Pugilian as Secretary, Vicky Giliano as Treasurer, and Mara Evangelista Hoover as PRO. Next would be the Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC Certificate, which was issued on April 2, 2020, thus establishing the Dermatopathology Society of the Philippines. DSP's mission is to promote the knowledge, training, and research in the field of dermatopathology. The DSP's vision is to improve the management of dermatological diseases through the field of dermatopathology. The yearly um, review in preparation for the doctors who are going to be taking their boards. The first one was done at uh, the Bayani Han Hall of uh, Unilab in 2006. In 2007, it was done at UST. And in the 2008 onwards, bless uh, Johan, he offered RITM. And since then, it has been there. <laughs>